Hey, this is Steve from Hit It Longer, and I've got my Frisbee disc here today so that we can take a closer look at the hand action needed to hit draws and fades. So stay tuned. Okay, let's start with the fade uh, because I think a lot of players have the wrong idea on the hand action needed to hit a fade. Now my mentor Mike Austin would always say that he could hit a fade, carry a fade in the air longer than most pros could hit a draw including the rollout. So he was certainly doing something different and I think it's right here in the hands which I'm going to show you with the disc today. Okay so for a fade the, the difference here, let me bring it in close, the difference here is going to be starting up here at the shoulder in the internal external rotators which are going to aid in the supination pronation of the forearm. In order to hit or throw a slice with this frisbee, it should be the same as fading it, I will have to simply leave my forearm a little bit more pronated or a little longer. In other words, an internal rotation of the humerus at the shoulder. And my ulnar deviation is going to flap free. There will be some dorsiflexion of the wrist a little later in the motion, but it's going to start with an ulnar deviation, move into dorsiflexion, but it's a free moving whipping action, not a not a holding, if I was just to hold it, truly hold it all the way through and let go, the, the disc wouldn't go anywhere. So just like this, keep the upper arm and forearm slightly turned inwards and flap through just as free as before. Eventually, that arm is going to turn out to get to the finish anyway. We're just going to hold it in internal rotation just a little bit longer. So let me turn around and show you what that might look like. Just like this, this will be my slice. So I got a good slice out of that. Now I'll show you in a second what I had to do to adjust for my slice spin with my body. Okay, so if I'm not going to miss my shot or miss with the disc way to the right of my intended target. I'm anticipating the slice spin, so I need to adjust by a couple different ways. You see already I've got my feet a little bit more open to my intended line of flight. I'm also going to turn open a little bit more so that I can get my starting direction on the disc a little bit more left. Let me show you that from this angle now. My feet are already a little bit more left in anticipation of swinging, in this case the club more left or, or here with the disc I'm going to start it more to the left. Okay, And I'm going to turn my shoulders open just a little bit more as I release the disc and that will get my starting direction to start a little left of the target line, something like this. The elbow will come up and fold the same way at the end, so we're, we're almost making an identical release. Not quite, but almost. So that's how I would hit a fade. Um, remember that hand action, it's going to be just a slight internal rotation of the thumb originating right up here at the shoulder. But flap three, free, you want to just explode that wrist through so you can still get full distance out of your drive when you're trying to hit a fade. Okay, now let's talk about a draw. A uh, draw is of course a controlled shot that moves from right to left. Uh, most golfers slice, so this part of the video might even help you. The tips that I that I cover in, in this part of the video might even help you um, with your slice. Um, basically, we're gonna do everything the opposite as we did with the fade. Um, the wrist is gonna be I'll show you the details on the wrist. That's going to be a little bit different. 
So let's look at it from this angle. I'll turn towards the camera again, get closer. If I'm going to let go of a draw, it's going to look like this. Okay, so let's examine that wrist action. Um, while the fade was holding a little more internal rotation, we're going to freely be externally rotating here at the upper arm and the shoulder. And that's going to change the wrist action slightly because of the angle of the arm. So you see this motion, I'm supinating the forearm, but it's being assisted back here in the external rotator cuff and those muscles in order to turn the humerus bone outwards, externally rotated that way. So where the fade had ulnar deviation still because the thumb was turned away, as I turn the hand square up, it's going to be more dependent on dorsiflexion to flap free. And again, don't hold that wrist, but whip that sucker through like that. And now as the thumb keeps turning over this way, we're actually going to be moving into radial flexion a little bit earlier. So radial flexion would be the turning up of the wrist, turning up of the thumb this way. So again, I'll do it just like that. So dorsiflexion and then up with the radial flexion like that. And let me turn around and I'll show you how this is going to hook now. And now let's take a look at the body adjustments I made to in anticipation of my left hand curve. Okay, so the body adjustments I made in anticipation of the shot curving left, of course I would have to um, start the either the golf ball or in this case the disc, I'll have to start it um, right of my intended line of flight. The way I'm going to do that is, where before I might have opened my stance, here I might aim my feet a little more to the right or even square would be fine too. I'm going to keep my chest closed to the target just a little longer so I feel like this left shoulder is my key. I feel it staying in, in my line of vision a little bit longer like this. So we're out of my left eye right now. I can still see my shoulder rather than with the fade here that that shoulder disappears to my line of sight. So slightly square or even slightly close stance. I'm keeping the chest and trunk just back to the target just a little bit longer. Sling that hand action over. Get me to hit a draw. Um, so for slicers, um, that body condition um, combined with, it's gotta be in the hands though. Um, we shape shots with our hands, even, you know, Tiger Woods came out just the other day and says, I hit shots with my hands. And I firmly believe that and we hit all nine ball flights, so, you know, low, medium, high, straight, slice or hook. I think we hit all those shots with our hands. Um, all right. I hope you got a great deal out of this. I hope it earned you uh, a like and a subscribe and I look forward to talking to you again soon.